Here's a five minute spiel on chondroblastoma of the bone. It's right there, it's in the epiphysis. There's the lesion on an MRI. Notice it's very well circumscribed and it's surrounded by intense edema. All this white stuff is edema. Here's a gross image. It's again in the epiphysis and it's very well circumscribed. But what you're here for, what you're here to listen to is how do I make a diagnosis of a chondroblastoma? And the simple answer is chondroblastomas have a very characteristic cellular phenotype. You recognize that phenotype and you'll almost never go wrong. When you look at these tumors under very low power, you'll see these sheets of somewhat epithelioid looking cells. Here they are, these epithelioid looking cells. Take a very close look at them because they have a very characteristic phenotype. Down here, there's a bit of calcification. This is the so-called chicken wire calcification. You may see it, you may not see it. But if you do, you're lucky. If you don't, the cells will give you the answer. And if you're really lucky and you've said your prayers at night, you will see classic chicken wire calcification, calcification that surrounds the individual neoplastic cells. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about chondroblastoma, the cell. So they have an abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm, dense eosinophilic cytoplasm, distinct cytoplasmic membranes, but it's the nuclei that to my eye are the most characteristic. They are oval, they're very vesicular. You do not see nucleoli, but you see these very prominent grooves. They often remind me of Langerhans cells. That is what you need to make a diagnosis of a chondroblastoma, those cells. But there's all kinds of variations on that theme. Some tumors like this could be very heavily calcified. Here's that very calcified tumor on higher power. But this also shows the other feature that you may see with a chondroblastoma, and that is this eosinophilic chondroid like matrix. And within that matrix, you may see the cells spindling out a bit like this, but if you look hard enough, you will find those classic cells of a chondroblastoma. Here's another example of these rounded fragments of tissue with this eosinophilic chondroid type matrix. Now notice there's a couple of giant cells, osteoclast type giant cells around as well. Another look at that eosinophilic chondroid matrix and osteoclast type giant cells. The osteoclast type giant cells are simply along for the right. They are not the neoplastic constituent. The mononuclear cells are the neoplastic cells. If you're not sure, there is immunohistochemistry that you could use. These tumors are almost uniformly positive for these two proteins. If you don't have them in your lab, no problem, because those cells are very characteristic of a chondroblastoma. There are other markers that are positive as well. The one pitfall to remember is cytokeratin. So do not mistake this for a metastatic carcinoma. The age, of course, should help you remember. So the differential diagnosis really depends on whether you see a lot of osteoclast type giant cells or do you see predominantly those epithelioid cells that we saw. If you see a large number of osteoclast type giant cells, then you've got to consider neoplasms that are rich in osteoclast type giant cells. And that's a relatively wide differential diagnosis, but the number one entity in that category is a giant cell tumor of bone. And the easiest way to tell a chondroblastoma from a giant cell tumor of bone is by looking at the mononuclear cells. Look at them. They lack the characteristic groove that you see in a chondroblastoma. Now, if you do not see those osteoclast type giant cells, or if they are not prominent, there's a whole slew of other entities that you must consider. The entity that I often consider when I'm looking at a chondroblastoma is this entity eosinophilic granuloma. Now, of course, you can do stains. Now, the reason I confuse the two is because eosinophilic granuloma, or EG, also tends to have grooves across the mononuclear cells. The easiest way of telling the two apart, other than immunostains, of course, is eosinophils. You do not see eosinophils in a in a chondroblastoma. How about this? Can I convince you some of them have fairly eosinophilic cytoplasm? 
Perhaps there may be a groove if you look really carefully, and this was keratin positive. You know, some chondroblastomas are keratin positive, but no, this is not a chondroblastoma. This is a metastatic thyroid carcinoma. How about this tumor? Epithelioid cells, abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm. Perhaps I can imagine some grooves, but wait, look at that cell. That's a blister cell. This is a epithelioid hemangioma. How about this tumor? The cells have abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm, have grooves across their middle, but wait, there are blister cells in here, vacuoles specifically, and a mixohyaline background. And this is, of course, a epithelioid hemangioendothelioma. Here's another epithelioid, but this time around, this looks far more malignant. This is an epithelioid angiosarcoma. This is obviously far more malignant, but the reason I bring it in here is that it does look epithelioid. This is an obviously malignant tumor. Look at the mitotic activity. Now, you're not going to mistake this for a chondroblastoma. However, I bring this up because this is the great mimic of bone pathology. This is an epithelioid osteosarcoma. There is no osteoid or no convincing osteoid on this slide. And the final epithelioid tumor, again, not a tumor that you're going to mistake for a chondroblastoma, but it does have rather epithelioid cells. Instead, this time around, these epithelioid cells are very cohesive and there are these physaliferous cells. This is a chordoma. This is another tumor that occurs in the epiphyseal area of the bone. Also has abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm and grooves down the middle. This is a clear cell chondrosarcoma. Clear cell chondrosarcomas have bone, prominent bone formation in them, something that you will not see in a chondroblastoma.